Hello, my name is Horion Gracie. Since my brother Hoyce's impressive victories in reality fighting matches, everyone now recognizes the importance of ground fighting. As a result, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu has become the number one source of Jiu-Jitsu instruction in the world. Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Intermediate was designed to build on the foundation that was established in our first series, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Basics. If you have practiced and mastered the techniques presented in the basics, you will find that your effectiveness in self-defense will be greatly enhanced by this new intermediate series. Your objective in a fight is to get to the mounted position. Once you accomplish this objective, there are many opportunities for you to win the fight. In this tape, I will show you how to capitalize on these opportunities. In this first tape, we will address various attacks you can use from the mounted position. The movements that you see can be very dangerous and I urge you to be protective and careful of your training partner. Let's do a quick review on some of the techniques we saw in the basic series. We had the arm lock from this position that you secure the arm, bring your second hand under, hold your own wrist, keep your head down, lift the elbow up, and slide the hand this way. Other side, please. Be sure to keep your elbow next to his neck. Hold the wrist without the thumb. Second hand comes under. Hold your own wrist. Keep your head out of the way so that he can't punch at you with that free hand. By keeping his hand glued to the ground, lift the elbow up and slide the hand like a paintbrush going this way. One more time. Secure the arm. Hold your wrist. Protect your face and bring it down. If you want to use your forehead on the back of your hand like this, it adds more leverage to the movement and increase your chance of being able to control his arm that way. Keep the elbow close next to his ear. Hold the wrist without the thumb. This hand goes under, secure your own wrist. And if you want to reinforce your leverage, you can put your forehead on the back of the hand. Lift the elbow and slide down. <clears throat> Another move we saw in the previous series was when the person wants to push you back like this. Put both hands on the chest but, and keep the weight on his chest so that you can bring your legs up this way. So the hands on the chest, bring the leg over and end up with the arm lock this way. By lifting the hip up, you will hyperextend the joint of the elbow. That's the move. One more time, please. He puts the hands on the chest. I'll bring both hands on around his arm. The arm that's going to get broken is between your arms. So if you want to catch this arm on the arm lock, you bring your hand this way. If you want to catch this arm, you bring your hands this way. Hands on the chest. Jump up. Keep the weight on the chest because that will facilitate the pivoting. Hold his hand on your chest, feet on the ground, lift your hip up and hyperextend the arm. When you do this move, be sure that you hold your hand with the thumb around the wrist because if you just do this, he can turn the hand and then escape from this position. It gives you much more control if you secure the hand with your thumbs around the wrist. So then lift your hip up. Okay, let's add a few new tricks. This is called the cross choke. Hand goes into the collar. The second hand goes on the other collar. Put your head down and then squeeze the neck. It will be easier for you to see what I'm doing and practice the techniques if we do it standing up. So, Hoist, let's get up, please. It's a very simple technique, but the big trick behind executing this movement correctly is re remembering that you should not rely on your arm strength. So the first thing you want to do is with one hand open the collar so that the second hand has easy access to the back of the neck. I'm grabbing the collar this way. My hand just slides underneath all the way in. The second hand goes under the first arm and grabs the cloth in a fist-like motion, like this. 
So the first hand goes in the collar, close my hand like a fist. The second hand goes under, grab the other collar, and with both hands in, I will turn the wrist, bring him towards my chest, and expand the chest. So one, second hand goes in two. My arms are very relaxed. Close my hand like a fist, and then I'm gonna bring him close to me and expand the chest. Once you bring your hand into the collar and the second hand grabs the other cloth like this, your hand should try to touch each other back there. The idea is to open the collar, bring your hand around, bring the other hand underneath. The second hand is always under the first arm. If you can do this with no, nobody there in front of you, just grab the hands like this, it would be great. Close your hand like a fist. See almost like a triangle or a diamond inside of your hands. From this position, you turn the wrist this way so that this blade of the wrist rests against the person's neck. This is the move. From here, please don't arm strength the whole uh, choke. The plan is to use your chest and expansion of your shoulders backwards so that the movement is this and not arms pulling around his neck. So one, grab the hand on the collar, the second hand goes in, turn your wrists, and as you bring the opponent close to your chest, is if you wanna do a, an inhale emotion. The idea is to expand by using the chest expansion. One more time, Hoyce, please. Grab the collar, the second hand goes way back in, Close your hand. As you turn your wrists, you want to bring your opponent towards your chest and expand your chest this way. Let me turn this way here, please. <clears throat> hand goes into the collar and close your hand like a fist. One. Second hand goes under and grabs the other collar. That's the move. Be sure to turn your wrists this way so that the blade of the wrist rests against the neck. So as I turn the wrist, it should be very tight already. Then as I bring him close towards me, once again, do not rely on your arms to pull the choke or do this kind of motion. That's absolutely wrong. One, two, bring him to your chest and then expand the chest. If you do it right, it doesn't even hurt your opponent. It's something that's so subtle that he it's almost like a, a numbing feeling. It feels, actually feels good for the person who's cho being choked out. So the hands go in, turn the wrist. Isn't that right, Hoyce? It's called a sleeve. <laughs> so you grab the hands on the collar, turn the wrist, expand the chest. Most people are gonna grab the neck and just squeeze. Like any other technique, I mean like most uh, the chokes, even if a poorly applied technique is gonna be effective. If you, get a, if you have a 16 size neck and you put a 15 size shirt on your neck, which is, you know, a little bit tight, and you go to work in the morning, by the time you drive into the parking lot, you'll be passing out, falling asleep. So any choke is something that you have to be taking very careful uh, application with. Therefore, I enforce you, as I said, I, I urge you, as I mentioned before, to be very careful with your training partner. And the person who is taking the choke, don't try to resist too much. You have to be aware of the change on the, on the, on the feeling on that, mom, on that kind of movement. So the hand goes into the collar, make it really snug, turn your wrist, and bring him close to you. As you expand the chest, he is going to start feeling uh, lightheaded. Uh, if you do it right, it should be something like one, two, three, four, type thing. He goes, <laughs> he goes in the twilight zone. All right, so one last time here. So the hand goes into the collar this way. The second hand goes under, way in. Turn your wrist and bring him towards your chest. The idea is to expand the chest and not pull with the arm, okay? One, two, and expand the chest. It will make all the difference if as you apply the technique, you make sure to open the lapel first with one hand. Don't try to just catch this hand because you can't get a very comfortable grip. Use the hand to open the collar to facilitate the initial grip. The second hand goes under, all the way back. Close your hand like a fist, turn the wrist and bring him towards your chest to squeeze the neck. Lay down. So once you get in this position here, allow yourself an extra second to loosen up the collar on your, on your opponent's uh, gi. Hand goes into the neck, the second hand goes way under. Look, Hoist is lifting the head up so that you can see what I'm, what's happening on my hands. Close your hand like a fist. 
Because I can't pull him up as I did standing up, I bring my body down. I come down towards him, putting my head on the ground and then squeezing the neck. All right. Every time you feel for, you're looking to get a choke on somebody's neck, keep in mind that you don't want to just squeeze the person's neck. That's not what you want. What you're working with is that you're stopping the circulation to the brain. So you have to try to feel your wrist sealing against the person's neck. You want to stop, you want to kind of, it's a piece of clay that you mold against the person's neck. That's the kind of feeling you're looking for. So your hand or your wrist should be relaxed so that you kind of take the shape of the neck around his neck. My hand is very loose, like there's a, there's a snug feeling around the person's neck. The person down here almost likes that hand like a pillow around his neck. It should make it comfortable for him. Anyway, the hand goes around the neck this way. The second hand, if instead of going under to grab the cloth this way, you want, you want to do this way here, it's also an option, grabbing over the arm. But if you're going over the arm, your thumb this way, this thumb this time is over like this. Let me turn your hand to the side a little bit more. So the first hand goes into the collar this way here. And the second hand, instead of going under for this stroke that we saw, the cross stroke, you bring with the thumb inside. Again, you close your hand like a fist. Don't grab the cloth like this with your thumb inside because you put pressure and stress on this thumb. Instead, grab the, the thumb over your four fingers. You wrap your four fingers on the cloth and the thumb will go over the four fingers. That's the idea, is to wrap it like this. First hand on the collar, the second hand goes way in. The four fingers wrap on the cloth first and then the thumb sits on top of it, like that. From here, the blade of the arm goes across his chest and once again I put my weight on top of him. As I go down, squeeze the neck. So the first hand goes into the collar, the second hand goes over with the thumb inside, rest your weight on top of him and squeeze. The other side, please, boys. The hand grabs the collar inside here. Second hand goes over. The thumb goes way inside. Close your hand like a fist this way. Bring the blade of the arm across the neck and rest your whole body weight on top of it. Hand on the collar, way in. Notice that I'm always creating a little extra space by pulling the collar open. One, the second hand goes over. Close your hand like a fist. If I have to loosen up the grip on the first hand, I will do that to give me a little more leeway with the cloth. Second hand goes way back. Turn your wrist inwards, keeping your wrist straight, kind of scraping down into his neck. Bring your head down and squeeze the neck. Another technique that is very effective from this position is what we call the kneading choke. One hand grabs the collar, the second hand will grab the cloth this way. That's the grip. From here, you want to bring the cloth across his neck. Not too much to go out of his neck with your hand, not too much to go with the hand out of his neck. You want to rest this last two fingers right here on the side of the artery, on the carotid around the side. So you grab the cloth, take the slack out, bring it across the neck, and as you pull back with this hand, lean the body weight down into the neck. The idea is to rest your body weight on the person's neck. So you pull, take the slack with one hand, and the other hand just pushes into his neck. As if you want to do this motion here, like this. This is the plan, as if you want to put all your weight on that arm. So you pull back with one hand and drive in the other hand. Hand goes across the collar, bring it across, 
And as I push one hand, I will pull the other one. Keep this arm straight so that you can transfer the, body of the, whole, the weight of the whole body onto that hand. So the idea is to do this move. That's what you're looking for. Hand goes across the neck like this. Take the slack out with one hand and push in, leaning the whole body weight into the person's neck. This way and the other side will be exactly the same thing. You take the slack out. The purpose of this hand is to pull the cloth so that there's no loose material around his neck. Tighten up like a, a hangman's noose. Across the neck, pull back with one hand and drive the body weight into the move. This is the motion you're looking for. The leverage comes from the upper body here, driving the weight downwards. Pull back with one hand and then lean forward. One last time here. So you're mounted on your opponent. Get a hold of the cloth this way or this way. One hand pulling and one hand pushing. And drive the whole body weight on top of this move. The next move is when you grab one hand on the collar with the thumb inside first. The second hand grabs further back out. And now, like a guillotine, you will bring the blade of the arm across the neck this way. The idea is to get a real deep bite with that first hand down towards the ground, touching the ground with the hand. Keep your wrist straight. The second hand grabs the collar from underneath right here, so to prevent the cloth from giving and, and moving around the neck. And then bring the elbow down to the ground. So if this hand is touching the ground, get this from the side here for a sec. If this hand is touching the ground, and I secure a good grip next to the ground, and I want to bring my elbow down, by the time the elbow touches the ground, his head goes boom, 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 roll up. So you, <laughs> so you grab the collar, secure the wrist. I mean, the grab, open the collar and grab with, with this hand. The second hand comes in. You don't have to grab too deep with that second hand. Just enough so the cloth doesn't slip around his neck. And then bring your elbow down in like a guillotine type motion, like a paper cutter that you just kind of slice down. So the hand goes in, grabs the cloth. The second hand grabs a little further back here and bring this elbow to the ground. And just bring it across the neck this way. The other side is the same thing. Grab the collar, use your hand rest on the ground, and as you bring the elbow down, you put your weight on top of the arm this way. Avoid coming down with your body here, because otherwise it's going to be just arm strength. By keeping your body weight up and just leaning and resting on top of this elbow, you have the whole mass of the body pushing the pressure into his neck. So take this slack out with one hand and just drive the weight in. Grab the cloth, take the slack out with one hand, keep your hand down here and push the whole body driving the elbow to the ground in this manner. So one more time, create the space on the collar, open up the lapel, reach in deep with the hand like this, be sure that you wrap your four fingers on the cloth and the thumb sits on top of the four fingers. Second hand grabs underneath here. Rest your hand on the ground and bring the blade downwards, keeping your body straight so that you can use the body weight onto the neck this way. Okay. Grab the collar. Deep. Second hand on the other collar. Bring the elbow across and drive the weight downwards. The next technique you're gonna see is a nutcracker, where you grab the collar like this, the second hand goes in like this, and using the cloth, the jacket for support, you pull into the cloth and squeeze the knuckles inwards. So grab from this side, the other hand on the other side. Don't just use your hands. Be sure that you pull with the back of your hand here. You use this for support and then put the knuckles in, driving into the neck this way. 
If you just grab the collar like this and try to squeeze his arm strength, that's not the plan. The plan is to pull on the cloth with the back of your hand here. So you pull onto the cloth and drive the knuckles in. The place to put the pressure is right on the line of the ear, right here, on the nerve on the side of the neck. You don't want to cr crush the jaw bone or the neck or the back of the head. That's not what you want. It's right here. There's a very tender spot right in the middle of the neck, right here. That's what you're looking for. So the knuckles, the top knuckles of your hand will reach in like this, grabbing both hands, put the neck, the pressure on the neck, and just rest your weight on top of him and drive the knuckles inwards like this. Grab the cloth, second hand grabs the other collar. Use the knuckles onto the back of the neck right here. Both at the same height. Your partner actually should guide you as far as making sure that you have the right sensitive spot. So sometimes you might put the hands at different heights. It might throw off a little bit the pressure. It doesn't feel as efficient. But if you use your partner as a, as a <clears throat> As a sounding board, he should be sure to line up your hands to the right sensitive spot on the back, of, you know, on the side of the neck. So one hand, two hands, they grab the cloth. They should be fairly even distance from the ground. Pull on the cloth. The pulling on the cloth is the trick. Don't just use your hands to do this motion. Be sure that you pull, you tug on the cloth and use that to drive the knuckles inwards. Of course, the knuckles on the top of the hand, not these ones here. That's the one. Grab the cloth, pull on the collar, and then drive the knuckles inwards into the neck. Okay. So anyway, so the hands will grab the collar like this. Both hands stay down, and then push the knuckles inwards into the neck. You might want to observe that as you do this move, you should use your elbow or maybe both elbows on the ground for balance so that you can establish a base here. Don't find yourself, you know, just tangling on the ground with your hands on his neck off balance. I also, at this point, use my feet kind of clamped underneath hoist to hold me from falling forward. I can control my body height, whatever I want. If I don't have this, I will collapse forward. But by using the foot, supporting myself underneath hoist, I can go as low and as far as I want, so it gives me much more control of my base. From that position, you can then control how low, grab the collar, both hands, use either elbow on the ground for balance, and then push the knuckles into his neck, making sure that you pull on the back of the cloth. The trick is using that cloth for support. That's what you're looking for. So using these feet, establish your position, and then drive the knuckles into the neck. Okay. Our next technique is that sometimes you find yourself in this position, and your opponent turns sideways to defend himself like this. He turns sideways. So put one leg up, bring the other leg behind his neck, and this hand, once again, I loosen up the cloth to allow me a better grip bringing the second hand under so I can grab the cloth with this kind of grip. The hand goes this way. Open the collar with one hand and the second hand goes under this way. So if I'm in this position here, turn this way a little bit, hoist please. This position, you turn sideways, put your leg up. This is still the mounted position. It's okay that he turns sideways. One hand creates a space so that the second hand can go under his neck and get a deep bite this way. Once again, there's a hand feeding the cloth to the other hand. They work together this way. One, two, there you go. Once you secure the hand this way, this hand will grab the other collar push it either down to the ground for balance, that you can use this for support on the ground, and then raise this whole backside straight up. One, two, keep your wrist straight, please. Don't bend your wrist this way here. 
Keep your wrist straight with the blade into his neck. That's the move. The second hand grabs on the other collar. Once again, to prevent this collar from sliding around when you squeeze with this first hand. Push down and bring back. If you settle for just any place on the cloth, there will be enough of a gap here to facilitate his resistance. It's going to take a lot more strength and much more time to make the technique work. So there again, I recommend that you take a second, an extra half a second here to instead of settling for any grip, go in deep. The deeper this hand can go into the neck this way, the sooner it will put pressure on his neck and causing him to tap out. The top of once again on the other side, please. So I'm here, you turn sideways. Allow him to turn sideways, find yourself in a comfortable stance here. Leg behind his neck, the other leg is standing up. One hand opens the collar, the second hand goes way under. That's the move, open the collar and go. slide it in. That's the move you're looking for. The hand goes way in. The deeper the bite with this hand inwards, the quicker he taps out. Take the slack away with this second hand, pushing away, and pull back with the whole body. One, two. You want to use your whole body to straighten this arm. One, push the hand down. The elbow slides up as a result of the shoulder rising. If I have the first hand on the collar, this side or on this side, and he turns sideways now, there we go again. He's already facilitating this motion. Grab the second hand on the collar and pull back this way. Once you have the hand on the collar this way here, you can also push his head back using the hand like this on the back of his neck. You can bring the hand way into the neck and put this hand on your arm right here. Whatever you want. There are all different variations of how to finish the move using the same principle of the, of the hand. Grabbing the collar and the second hand tightening up. The idea is to prevent the guy from turning, therefore increasing the pressure on his neck. This would also work. And there's a whole bunch of different variations you can use for the same choke. Sometimes when you have the first hand on the collar, if your training partner has also been smart enough to practice the techniques we have on the basic series. He has his hand here at this point, ready to throw you out. As soon as you see this hand, you put your leg up, and he now is sideways, but he can't throw me anymore because that leg is up. Guess what? Look where his arm is here. By having his arm in this position, this hand can also go to your own collar at this point. Put this hand on the ground in front of his neck. My head, my leg is pinning his head against the arm. So I have the arm secured. This hand is on the ground. And when I put the weight here, it will enable me to bring the leg around into the arm lock that we have seen before. This is called the double attack, because I start preparing for the choke. I see his hand getting ready to throw me over. If I don't do anything, he'll trap my foot, as we saw before, and then raise his hip and flip me out. But what I do here is that I put this leg up and slide my knee under. It turns sideways. I can actually help him a little bit if you have to, aid him into turning. From this position, I want to Grab my collar to secure the arm. He now the arm is trapped. My hands are here for balance until I decide to put the hand in front of his head, pinning his head against my leg and the arm, this way. Got the arm secured. Put your weight on this front hand as a pivoting point. Bring your leg around, lay back, and you now have his arm to complete this way. By raising your hip, you once again Hyperextend the joint of the elbow. Same thing on the other side, please. The hand is on the collar. 
always open that collar, slide the hand in. Makes it a lot easier than just trying to grab with one hand. One, you hold the arm. Getting ready to flip me out. Leg up, here I am, sideways now. With the knee kind of wedging him behind his back so he can't roll backwards. This hand feeds the collar to this first hand. Be sure that you grab behind the elbow because if you hold this way here, he could slip the elbow out and escape. Whereas if you use your chest behind this elbow here, bracing with the chest, this hand come here, secure the arm. There's, a, there's that hugging feeling that you control the arm with your body at this point. Secure the arm, bring this hand in front of his face, bend your hand to the ground. The trick, once again, is if you don't put your weight on your hand, you will find difficulty in bringing that leg around. Whereas if you put the weight here, it's a lot smoother to spin the leg in one flowing motion to go backwards and once again here we have the arm for the hyperextending with the lift of the hip. <clears throat> Some people are going to be more limber than others in executing this technique. And as we've been saying all along, in order to practice jiu-jitsu, especially if you do it the way we recommend, which is something that does not require speed, strength, or coordination, it should be very easy for you to do the technique. And you may say, hold on, but what if I'm not limber enough to swing that leg around? What if I'm out of shape? I'm just doing this thing as a hobby. I say, well, let's make it possible for you, my friend. Put the leg up. You turn him sideways. Make sure that you adjust the elbow in front so that you have control on the arm. Secure the collar this way. And for some of you that by putting the hand here, still don't have the ability to bring the leg over his head, you still might find yourself difficult, uh, with difficulty to bring the leg over. Remember that you can put your hand right on his head, which raises your height a little bit, therefore facilitating a lot the swinging of the leg. Hold the wrist and raise your hip. And don't worry about crushing the person's head because he won't crush his head. It's not. We're talking about serious hard heads here. <laughs> Put your hand on his head like this. Rest the weight because it's easy for the guy to support the weight. There's nothing to it. It's just a, like a helmet. You can't hurt the person's head. Put your hand like this, open hand right in the head. Lock your elbow straight. If you hold back the weight and don't want to bother him by putting the weight here, it's not going to be enough balance for you. So put your weight, smack his head down like this, and swing the leg around. Hold the wrist and raise your hip. Of course, Hoist is being nice to me today and letting me smack him around. <laughs> Thank you, Hoist. <laughs> so that's why I'm going to do one more time. Do what I can while I can. So grab the collar, control the arm, put the weight on the head. Rest your arm straight here so that you can put the weight down. The weight of the body is all on the head and swing the leg around for this motion. Hold the arm, raise your hip. All right, let's see another choke. It's very common, and as a matter of fact, you have seen Hoist do this many times in his, in his uh, no holds bar matches. When it gets to a position like this, when you get to the mounted position and you hit your opponent, it's not uncommon that he turns over because he doesn't want to get hit in the face. So he turns over into this position here. Okay? What happens is by turning over, he exposes himself not only to be hit from behind, but even worse than that is to get choked from behind. Bring your hand around the neck this way. The second hand goes on the back of his neck. And then bring him close to your chest and squeeze this way. What do you need twice, please? Let's review this move. <clears throat> like I said before, any choke, even a poorly applied choke, can be very dangerous. So be protective towards your partner. Um, it's very important that you kind of keep a standard uh, agreement that every time you start feeling a pressure on the choke, you tap out. So let me remind you of that. 
as you start to squeeze in your, ne your friend's neck or arm, you know, as you practice the techniques, be aware of the choke, of the choke's effectiveness, and the, 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 your training partner should be prepared to tap out as soon as he feels any kind of discomfort on the neck, okay? So the first part of the move is bring your hand around the person's neck. You want to line up your elbow with his chin this way. This hand sets up around your arm or shoulder, whatever feels comfortable for you here. The main thing is to keep this part around the neck snug. So this is one part right here. The second hand goes on the back of his neck. And then by expanding your chest and your shoulders, by expanding your chest and your shoulders backwards, you want to do this move. You want to expand the chest. One, two, three. Once again, it's not the arm stretch movement. Don't force with this hand. One, adjust this hand. Second hand behind his neck. Keep your head down and then push your chest forward. So the hand goes on the back of the neck. Adjust this way. Second hand goes this way. The hand goes behind his head and then push your chest forward. One, set the hand over here. Don't bring this hand backwards, please. Keep your hand like this as if you're combing his hair. The hand goes on the back of his neck like this. And don't use your head skipping it away from the body. Keep your head down close as if you're hugging the person. Pretend you really like the guy. You really want to hug that guy close to you. You want to bond with him. So that by the time your hand goes into this, the second hand, there's a hugging, there's an overall hugging feeling. That's what you want. The snugger you can put yourself around the person's neck, the less opportunity there will be for the circulation to happen, which is your objective. So by bringing the hand around the neck, the second hand goes back in and put your shoulders back. If you do it right, as I said before, it doesn't even hurt your partner. It's just like a, a warm feeling that he's going to get through his body. So the idea, <laughs> the idea is to bring the hand around the neck this way. Bring your hand up two, and then raise your shoulders. The movement is the shoulders going back and your chest pushing forward. That's the movement. It's expanding the chest. The other side is one, two, lock it up, and squeeze the neck. Hand goes around the neck. One, two, and three. There's one detail about this move that we have to, uh, to add here. Is as you position the hand around the neck, the pressure that he feels is continuously growing. In other words, you don't place the hand on the neck and in a separate motion squeeze separately. That's not the idea. The idea is that as I put the hand on the neck, I'm already adjusting the neck up. It's already feeling the adjustment. The second hand goes in. By the time he locks in, he's going out. So there's going to be a gradual but continual increase on the pressure as we go on to the technique. OK, please, once again, please. So we can apply the choke from behind if the person turns over on his own. So in the middle of the fight, he turns over, we go for that choke. Sometimes, however, he doesn't want to turn over. And this is what the technique we're going to use to kind of help him to turn over, okay? So either you're slapping the person or you're squeezing his neck or you're distracting him and he raises his hand to protect himself from getting hurt. So one hand on the back of his elbow, push the elbow forward, secure the wrist and bring your shoulder behind the edge of the neck. I mean, the elbow fits right here on the back of my shoulder. One. This hand goes under his neck, securing his wrist. That's the idea. Feed the hand to the other side. From here, use your body to roll him over. Fold the elbow down, and with your chest, push him over this way. So you fight with the guy here. You might slap him a couple of times. You raise the hand to protect his face. Hold the wrist and push the elbow. The idea is to bring his elbow right here on the groove of the neck so that he can't force the arm back. Turn this way, Hoist. I'm controlling him with, this, with the neck this way. This hand goes under and secure the wrist. 
One hand feeds the wrist with the other hand. From here, raise your body, use your chest to push him over. It's not your hands that are gonna turn him over here. Your chest is what's gonna drive him over that way. Now you're on the back of his, be back of him, and you can once again go for the same choke if you wish to do so. One more time, please. So I'm here, he raised the arm, push the arm to the side, secure the wrist, and bring your shoulder, the groove of the neck, here, right above your shoulder, under the back of his elbow. This hand goes underneath, hold your wrist, feed the, his, hold his wrist, and with your body, you want to roll him over. Turn this way a little bit. Be sure to clear this leg so that you, when he starts to roll, he doesn't get trapped on top of your own leg. So move your leg out of the way a little bit so that you give him space to roll over. You want him turning over to his stomach. Sometimes he's going to land on his elbow here, which prevents him from turning more. Can't go any further because his own elbow is bracing him. So it's up to you to use your free hand because the other hand is holding his wrist here. Use your free hand, shift the weight off his back a little bit, pull the elbow down, and then wrap him up by leaning the weight this way. Always ready to establish your base, and you can now, as I said, go once again for the choke and complete the move this way. Once again, please. So you're on top of the person like this, bug his neck, he use the hand to block that, Push the elbow up and trap the arm. Hold the wrist, bring hand comes under, secure his wrist. The purpose of this hand holding his wrist is to prevent him from turning backwards this way. Can't unwind here anymore. Use the elbow in your chest. Use your chest to roll him over. The trick is to keep continuously readjusting your body further and further down on his body to force him to roll over. Watch out for that elbow on the ground right here. Take the weight off, fold his arm down, and with your chest, push him forward so that you have the position under control. His own body now is trapping his arms. It's a very uncomfortable position. His body weight is trapping his own arms like that. It feels like wrapped up like a present at this point. So from here, hand goes under the neck, and then complete with the choke. So another version of, another way that you can go to the person's back is when you're mounted like this, you have the hand on the collar. From this position, you ro turn him sideways, you know, helping him with this hand. And from here, get a hold of him, embrace the person, sit back, and bring the lower leg outwards to hook the legs this way. So that you can find yourself on his back this way. Once again, nice, please. So from here, I got the hand on the collar. He kind of holds on to this. I'm going to turn him to the side. Again, there's my leg up and the second leg bracing me here from behind. Get a hold of the guy any way you want. Pull him with you. The trick is that your body is now glued, hugging him tight. And as you throw your body back, he comes up with you. Bringing the second leg out, hooking it here and you're gonna find yourself behind his back with the legs hooking inside of this, his legs like that. This is the position of your feet, just like that. Okay, once again, please. So from here, do it on the other side. So the person is here. Turn him sideways, get a hold of him. See his elbow is up. We could go for that choke we talked about. His elbow is holding on tight. I mean, the arm lock we talked about. If the arm is tight from this position, we're here, bring him back open with you, and then catch the legs. Hooking the legs this way. One more time, please. Grab the hand on the collar, turn him over. Get a hold of him. If he has the arm this high, we can either go for this option of grabbing the arm here, pinning his head down this way or this way, and bringing the leg over as we talked about before. Okay. 
if he keeps the elbow tucked in and you can't get a hold of the arm, then you are behind his back. Embrace the person here. Pull him backwards and hook the legs. It's very important that you put your feet this way and do not cross your legs. Huh? Keep your legs this way. Once you have the hooks established behind his back like this, even if he tries to roll now, you're going to be able to keep on his back because of the hook. So if he rolls, the hook keep me on his back. The idea here is to make sure that you have your legs trapped inside of his legs so that that establishes you, your, your position behind his back. By having the hooks here, he can't just roll out. If he starts to turn, my legs will help me to keep the position of base behind his back. So the control of the legs here is very important. To the other side, hoist, please. So it, it gives me the sensitivity to know where he's going and allows me to maintain the back position. Okay, so anytime you find yourself behind a person's back, hook the legs this way. Do not cross your feet, just put your legs this way. Hoist, why don't you lay down, please, once again, on your stomach. If you're choking a person this way here, and you're getting ready for the choke, for example, this way, and he gets up, if you don't hook the legs, you're, oh, you're going to lose your position. No good. One more time, please. If I just think about the choke, go ahead, and I have no hooks, I'm going to fall off. There's, no, there's nothing to grab me on his back. I have no support to stay on his back. So this is why, once again, please, as soon as he raises his body, my legs will go inside, hooking the legs like we talked about. There you go again with the legs hooked on the leg. So if he rolls, I now have time to prepare the choke, just to stay on his back. He keeps rolling. And here we are again, with the legs controlled the way we want. So it's imperative, very important that you hook the legs this way and you don't just forget the hooks. Let's review one more choke. So, so you turn your partner to the side like this, get a hold of him, bring him back this way. Once you find yourself in this position behind his back, one hand opens the collar, so the second hand can go in, grabbing deep with the thumb inside. Second hand grabs the other collar, pushes it down and away, and then lean back, straightening the arm. The idea is to grab the cloth, feed it to this first hand, Second hand grabs further down to prevent the cloth from sliding out. And by bringing the elbow and the shoulder back, straightening both of my arms, you then bring the blade of the arm across his throat. The idea is to straighten. From the other side is this. Open the collar. Get a real deep bite to this hand. The second hand grabs the other cloth. And like I said, the blade of the arm goes into his throat. One push it away, and then bring back by doing this move. One, real deep bite. Two, grab the cloth here, straight your arm, and pull back. So once you're behind the person's back, let's turn this way just a little bit. Open the collar, get a real deep bite this way. Second hand pushes the cloth away. Keep this wrist straight and then bring the blade across the neck this way. One last time. Behind his back with the hook on the legs. The hand goes way in. Close your hand like a fist, this way. Second hand grabs the collar further down. Push the cloth away and bring the blade straight across the neck as you lean back. All right. Lay down hoist, please. So from here, turns over, bring the person back over you this way. And I have the hand already here, so I can feed the collar to this hand, second hand on the other collar, and pull back to choke this way. Or feed the cloth to this side, untangle the grip, 
and pull back this way. Let's do a quick review of all the techniques we saw in this tape. <clears throat> you saw the choke that you open the collar, get a good grip, second hand goes way in, turn the wrists inwards, put your head down, and squeeze the neck. The other one is when you have the hand same way, same initial grip this way, second hand goes with the thumb inside over like this, and bring the blade across the neck. Again, bring your weight down. The third one is that kneading choke, when you always take a second to untangle the cloth on the person's gi. Bring the cloth across the neck, put in the pressure of the two last little knuckles here on the back of the, on the side of the neck, pull back with this hand, and lean your whole body weight into the choke this way. The third one, I mean the fourth one is that guillotine that you grab with the collar, with the thumb inside, the other hand grabs the cloth right here, bringing the blade of the arm across the neck, Coming this way, the other side, same thing, bring the cloth down this way. The other one <clears throat> is if the person turns sideways, actually, I'm sorry, the nutcracker. So if they grab both hands this way, be sure to pull on the cloth. Use your feet for support, and the knuckles will go on the side of the neck, digging inwards. Then we have the one if the person from this position turns sideways. You feed your hand behind his neck. Let me turn this way, hoist a little bit. Right here. He turns sideways. Feed the collar way in. This hand grabs the cloth, push down to the ground, and bring the shoulder up. We do this once again on the other side. Right here. We turn sideways. Bring the cloth around. Get a good grip on the cloth. Push the cloth down. And then the whole body drags my arm away. The other option is when I do this move, reaching in for the collar, he puts his arm over my arm. From here, I can now feed the collar with so this hand. Put your hand on the ground or on top of his head. This way or this way, whichever feel more comfortable for you. Grab your collar, put the weight on this hand, and bring the leg over, lay back, and lift your hip up to hyperextend the arm. The other side hoist. Here, turn it over sideways, the arm is exposed. I grab my collar with this. Put the hand on the head, keep the weight on this hand, swing the leg over, lay back, and once again, lift the hip up. If he turns over to his stomach, he now exposes his neck to get choked out from behind on the carotid choke like this. One, cinching it up is crucial. Rest your hand right here. Hook the leg, I mean hook the neck, and then squeeze the neck. At this point, remember that if I'm doing this move and he gets up, hook your legs. So that if he rolls, I have the hook on the leg here to keep him in the same position. Go the other way, hoist. So that it gives him control. I can keep my balance regardless of the kind of choke I have or might not have on his neck. From here, you can then squeeze and finish it up. Here you go, please. There's also another option that if the person does not want to turn over and you do want to turn him over to his stomach, you put a little pressure on his neck, he blocks with the hand, use your neck to wedge the back of his uh, elbow here, feed one hand to the other, controlling his wrist, wedge the elbow, use your chest to push him over, clearing the elbow downwards, bring it across, lift his head up and go for the choke here if you want. Other side please. So I'm here, I push the guy's elbow across with the hand, or distract him with a couple of hits, push the elbow across, hold the wrist, fold the elbow, use your chest. Be sure to lift that leg up, please, so that she doesn't wrap up his body on top of your leg. 
roll him across, fold the elbow downwards, push the weight forward, center your weight here, and then go for the choke. Once again, if he gets up, hook your legs inside so that you can roll with him, and then squeeze his neck from here if you have to. The other position is if you find yourself in here, another way to turn him over is to roll him sideways, adjust him close to you, and from here by hugging him with this hand or grabbing him by the, key, the gi, you can sit back, bring your bottom leg out and over so that you find yourself with the hooks on his leg. From this position, you can now create a space with one hand, feeding the collar for the second hand, adjust the choke, and pull back and squeeze the neck. So from here, once again, turn him over sideways, get a hold of him, pull him over here, get the hook on the leg, create space, grab a good grip on the cloth, second hand finds the other collar, lay back and straight your arms away from the guy. This is another option, thank you, Hoyce. As you practice these techniques, please be protective of your partner. Don't forget to you know, remind him to tap out as soon as he feels any kind of pressure on the neck. And uh, practice these techniques slowly because they can, they're very efficient and they should not hurt as you put the pressure gradually on your, on your partner's neck or arm, whatever you're practicing at that moment. Uh, this concludes tape number one. On tape number two, we'll show you some attacks on how to handle the position when the person is inside of your guard.